Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Samuel. And I'm Emma Lukens. As you've probably noticed, we're now puppeteers. It's true. After we were cursed by Charlie Duncan, the trashy collegiate coffee magnate of South Boston, we quickly learned we can only communicate through puppets, a la the beaver. Oh God, I tried to remove that movie from my mind. Hey, can it? The beaver is a grade A motion picture. Hey Dunks, when are you gonna reverse this curse? Never ever. Not until you declare that Dunkin's Coffee is better than Starbucks live on the Emerson channel. Oh, come on. Nobody watches the Emerson channel. Save it. It'll convince everybody in the Piro lobby. We can't really say brand names on the Emerson channel. Parody law. Look it up. Bye. Just start the show, you stupid kids. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Common Agenda. Having to speak through a puppet has really made me think about life and how the banality of our existence is reflected in our willingness to comply with societal norms. We're all puppets, tangled up in the mechanistic strings of day-to-day -day life. Everything's a lie. Wake up, sheeple. Tiedemann's iPad 2016. Anyways, here's a few zany things that happened at Emerson last week. Everyone is dying. Just kidding. But seriously, flu season is among us, and Emerson's own Center for Health and Wellness is prepping for the worst. If you haven't gotten your flu shot yet and somehow haven't died as a result, you can stop by the clinic on November 17th to get your flu shot, 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 shots, everybody. But seriously, get your flu shot and be safe. Emerson's class of 2018 is holding an off-campus living info session Thursday on the fifth floor in Colonial, just in case some newer students wanted to live in Austin or with their crazy aunt in Southie. They will be exploring the variety of options that Boston has to offer, ranging from studio apartments to the finest benches in the public garden. For those last-minute shoppers, you know who you are. CVS jacks up the price of cardboard boxes for people who don't buy them in bulk. You can't afford it! The Emerson rebranding survey was released this month and is just as poorly put together and patronizing as you would expect. So here's my TV puppet personality opinion that you have to listen to. Take any picture with visible fedoras out of every part of the school's marketing and stop having Lee Pelton's grandma run the school's Twitter. While you probably agree with me that these are the most pressing issues, feel free to give your own opinion by clicking on the link in your Emerson email. And now for the crime log. The ECPD and Boston Fire Department investigated a fire alarm set off in Piano Row last Wednesday. The cause of this pandemonium was a student's late night macaroni and cheese. Emerson College is an art school, but I don't think this includes the culinary arts or fire safety arts or for that matter, basic microwave operation arts. At the end of the day, I think we can just chalk this up as another reason Guy Fieri needs to visit our school and save us from culinary incompetence. And now here's Joey Sachs with another Slamma Gemma installment of Focus on Film. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's Common Agenda. Tune in next week for, like, I don't know, probably more self-aware shenanigans. Guys, I can't reverse the curse until you give me some product placement here. No way, Jose. We're on the Emerson channel. We have integrity. Yeah, much like the 68 no-no words, we'll never say that Dunkin' is better than Starbucks on live TV. I'll give you three dollars. Dunkin', Dunkin is, is better, better than, than Starbucks? Starbucks? Worth of Dunkin' Donuts coupons. What? Oh, we've been fooled. Ugh. And the curse is reversed. That's all that matters. Let's... Thank God. I hope we don't have another curse episode. Ugh. <sighs> well, I guess that's our show, everybody. Be safe. Shove Duncan down your throat. Rose. Rose. Absolutely not. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Joshua Samuels. And I'm Emma Lukens, and I'm about to get a pumpkin spice latte. And this is my fashionable fall scarf. And these are my Ugg boots. And this is Common Agenda. It's kind of more like venti pumpkin spiced Common Agenda te, if you ask me. Oh, stop, Emma. You're taking this way too far. I love it. And here's the official Common Agenda Starbucks butler, Jean-Michel Meppa. Here are all your coffee beverages, Ooh. mademoiselle. Uh, why is my name on this, George? And why is my name spelled Irma? Because je ne parle anglais. Welcome back to Venti Pumpkin Spice Common Agenda. Well, it's been a week since daylight savings time began and my biological clock is ruined. Seriously, I've been asleep this entire week. So here are a few news stories that I'm pretty sure are real and not an elaborate frappuccino-fueled fever dream. 
Somebody call the veganist Kathy Feston because the DH's vegan station is now open on the weekends. Now you can wait in line and get that tasty tofu fresh cooked seven days a week. Now your vegan friends have no excuse to skip out on your weekly Sunday brunches. You hear that chrysanthemum? There's more than just eggs, tater tots, and pretend pasta at the DH. You literally have to come. Becky Tinker, a 2011 Emerson graduate, released Everstar, her first pilot and children's animated series, on Amazon Prime to rave reviews from the site's users. Everstar follows the story of Ainsley Wicket and her friend as they go on an intergalactic adventure to save the alien spaceship Everstar from disaster. This is part of Amazon Prime's pilot season, which means that Becky Tinker needs good reviews for the series to get picked up. Watch the episode and give your honest feedback or just click five stars. You never know when you might need the mafia. Emerson College is better known for its Potter nerds than for its athletes. So much so that our biggest sport is actually Quidditch. After months of chasing around men in golden spandex with wooden sticks between their legs, the Emerson Quidditch team has qualified for the World Cup. It's going to be held in Columbia, South Carolina, because they wanted to go for a location that is reminiscent of Hogwarts, off the grid with customs a century behind the rest of society. And now for the crime log. We make a lot of jokes at the expense of the MBTA, and this week we were earnestly trying to avoid that. But the green line had to go completely off the rails, literally this time. The little train that couldn't went off the rails Sunday around the BU Central Tea Stop. So now we're just going to have to do an all-out roast of the tea. Hey, MBTA, do you stand for Massachusetts Bay Transit Authority or Mad Bad Train Awful? That's right, I'm the Roast Master General, and maybe it's time we get you some training wheels. And now let's stay on track with Paola and Stage Spotlight. Well, guys, my caffeine buzz is wearing off, so that's all the time we have this week. Make sure you tune in next week for more news stories and upcoming events. Bonjour, I have brought you two scups of my special blend of pumpkin spice latte. Oh, Mepa, you shouldn't have. You're right, I shouldn't have. Um, this PSL doesn't taste like it's a PSL. It tastes like a magic potion! It is a magic potion, and I am not really a barista. Oh. It's me, Charlie Duncan, heir to the collegiate coffee empire, and everything that tastes like dirty water. Duncan doesn't taste like it's dirty water. Trust me, I make it. It's literally just water from the Charles. Oh no! Is this a contrived way to make us wear stupid outfits on the next week's episode? Maybe. <laughs> I certainly hope it isn't, but we'll see you next week, everybody. Be safe! Hey, Spookersonians. I'm Emma Lukens. And I'm Joshua Samuels. And this is my ostrich, Eduardo. Why do you have an ostrich? Look, don't you remember? I attempted to quit Common Agenda, but a malevolent wizard cursed me as punishment. And now I must bear the cross of having to ride an ostrich wherever I go. Oh, man. Elevators must be really tough for you guys. Are you kidding? Now I'm an M celeb. Move over, Dan Goldberg. There's a new M sheriff in town, and his name is Joshua Samuels. Who would have thought that a wizard's curse could make you arbitrarily popular? I know, right? Hopefully this curse won't be reversed by the end of this episode. Do you know that ostriches are the world's largest bird and that they have three stomachs? I know, crazy, right? You'd be surprised how many fun facts you learn when you're cursed to ride an ostrich for eternity. There are so many perks to being spirit-bound to an ostrich. I have new ostrich powers now, like hearing ominous incantations in Latin about how I betrayed the LB wizard so my soul will be punished for eternity. Anywho, here's what's going on at Emerson this week. Last Friday, there was a pie-eating contest hosted by Emerson Channel Sports to see who could eat America's signature dish the fastest. Surprisingly enough, ECS was able to find 20 Emerson students who could ingest gluten. There was a strict rule that they couldn't use their hands. Basically, they hosted a sporting event that involved zero upper body strength and eating comfort food with no table manners. That's called self-awareness. Apparently, it took 20 minutes for the contest to conclude. Given that they were using the same muscles one would use when making out and other things, the gentlemen in particular may want to reflect on their performance before next session of Netflix and Chill. It's only feminist. The city of Boston dug up part of the common to look for Revolutionary War material. Apparently, the common was built on top of land that was once used for British encampments. In looking for early industrial machinery, the diggers thought they had made an amazing discovery, until they realized that all they found was the tea. 
Archaeologists were severely disappointed by this because at least doohickeys from the 1700s usually work. The dig is still ongoing. Polly Carl, creative director of Arts Emerson, has been named Person of the Year by the National Theatre Conference. Carl won the award for helping to produce new shows at Arts Emerson as well as co-founding HowlRound, the college's online theatre community forum. Carl said of their win, I've had a long history in a career of working with artists to develop new work for the stage. I think the award acknowledges the collaboration with those artists over the years. Now for the crime log. On Monday, October 19th, a student reported his wallet stolen to the Emerson College Police Department. The student actually cited that his wallet may have been stolen by a ghost. This story does have a happy ending, though. The wallet was located after ECPD had the student thoroughly check his backpack. And now, here's Joey Sack with Focus on Film. That's all for today, everybody. Make sure you tune in next week for another exciting installment of Common Agenda, where presumably there will be more news stories and at least some upcoming events. Have a great day. Stop, foolish mortals. Oh, no, it's the malevolent wizard, Gan Dolberg. That's right, it's me, Gan Duldberg. I heard you were becoming an M-celeb, and as you know, there can only be one M-celeb, and that's me, the evil wizard, Gan Duldberg, strongest wizard boy. Wait, I know that voice. All right, that's our show, everybody. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. Be safe. What's the 411, everybody? Welcome to the raddest, baddest episode of Common Agenda yet. Common Agenda, back to the 90s. That's right, we're going back to the time when Bill Clinton was chilling in the White House and Uncle Jesse was chilling in the Full House. Yeah, the 90s were all that in a bag of chips. We had slap bracelets. Saved by the Bell. Tamagotchi. Vanilla Ice. Seinfeld. Newman. Mary Kate and Ashley. Mary Kate and Ashley's Mystery Agency. Fanny Packs. Friends. The Fresh Prince. Shaquille O'Neal's acting career. Y2K. Monica Lewinsky. Stop. Oh, oh, shnikes. What's up, home skillets? Welcome back to Common Agenda, back to the 90s. Did you know that Clueless was released in 1995? That movie deserves some serious snaps, am I right? Did you know that Bill Clinton played the saxophone and had an affair with his intern? Rad, that was something that was in the news. Yeah, that scandal was all that in a bag of Dunkaroos. You'd think that news would just stop after peaking in the 90s, but news is being made every day. So here are four fresh news stories. Since we all know how good Emerson is at teaching you the industry part of the entertainment industry, Emerson has officially announced the creative business major for students that are desperate to mix their artistic instincts with the amoral principles of Gordon Gecko. The major's existence may come as a surprise to those Emerson students convinced that films and TV come magically from the pure conviction of the creative spirit, but learning the evils of capitalism can help you with your art. Emerson faculty member Lenny Manzo is making short films about coffee and how it relates to community. It reflects on Emerson's lack of activity in the last few weeks that we are reporting on it over anything else. But think about it. Think about how necessary coffee is in your life. I know I would be a high school dropout, sleeping in a box and ranting about the real ending of 10 Things I Hate About You to passing strangers with small children if it wasn't for the boost that I get from my daily dose of caffeine. Thank you, Depa. We don't take enough time to thank coffee for holding our community together. Alumnus Emerson, Los Angeles faculty member and filmmaker Julian Higgins may do the one thing that could possibly cause him to lose all credibility as an artist in the eyes of your average Emerson student. Get nominated for an Oscar! Julian Higgins' film Winter Light was selected from 144 submitted shorts to be a finalist for the Academy Award for Best Live Action Short. To boot, IMDb's recently released early Oscar predictions by Keith Samantin, which has him winning. We would like to congratulate Julian on his achievement and making Emerson proud. We would also wish him the best of luck in convincing his more pretentious students that he's more than a corporate sellout. And now for the crime log. Last Saturday night, while you Emersonians were getting lit at some film kids' fundraiser, Boylston Street was also getting lit in the fireway. There was an incident of arson reported early in the morning at 2 a.m. The only thing I can think of that would have led to this is a lighter mishap from a student taking a late night smoke break. And now here's Julia Linger with Weekend in the Beat. for this week's episode. Tune in next week for Wait! 
We can't have another episode next week. What do you mean? We're done. We're free. It's winter break. So we don't have to read dumb jokes about memes anymore? No, sorry, Bob. Let's just live in the 90s forever. The 90s are the place I was always meant to be. Yeah, now we can stop. We can't change the past, Josh. You're right. I guess we can only hope for a better future. I know that I can't take no more. It ain't no lie. I want to see you out that door, baby. Bye, bye, bye. bye. <laughs> Have some happy holidays, everyone. And for the last time, be, be safe. safe.